Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Chad McRae, lead developer of Spookville Cabin Escape. This devlog has a huge upgrade, something that we've been lacking for a long time and I'm excited to share it with you. As you know, Spookville Cabin Escape is a cutesy horror game that's now been made open world. There's a huge environment to explore. And while you're exploring, you may come across a few resources, things like wood, stone and components that you can collect to bring back to your cabin to build up its defenses against the scarecrow's minions like the giant spiders and the werewolves. I've been working on this a long time to really make it feel good. I learned a lot in random item spawn generation. I added some polish to the UI that when you collect the images they have a little particle effect that gets attracted to the UI element that represents the resource. There's a lot in this update and I am excited to share it with you. Okay, we are in the world of Spookville and the very first thing you might notice is that we implemented a compass bar at the top of the screen. And this is where points of interest and navigation, currently I've got all the other points of interest hidden because there's going to be an achievement when you discover all of the points of interest. So part of this compass system is also a map because the world is quite large and so pressing M on the keyboard will open up the map. And here is the world of Spookville. So we've got the, the map icon for the cabin and we've also got the player indicator, that arrow, automatically updating to the direction that the camera is facing. Let me show you uh, what the resource collection looks like. Here is a stone in, in the road and it's prompting the user to press a button to interact or to collect. And when I do that, and there is a nice little outline that displays when I get within range. When I collect it, you'll see the object get attracted to the player and then a particle effect will get generated and go towards the stone UI image in the bottom left hand corner. Let me know if it's a little too big. We are within range. I'm going to collect it. And there we go. So each resource will have a random amount associated with it. We introduced this mechanic very early on in the game. It's actually one of the very first objectives. So again, I come up to collect. These resources only have one each for the tutorial. There we go. Task completed. We got our five pieces of wood. We should take the wood back to Mung. Thanks. This should be easy enough to keep the fire bait going tonight. Another chore? Come on. Yeah, that's one of uh, Cohen's new favorite lines in the game. So we, uh, we can go back out and, and start collecting some firewood. The resources are not always going to be as easy as that to find. Like I said, I've created an algorithm to scatter them across the world. As you're exploring, you'll be able to find these and just pick them up, which go into your inventory. So let me show you kind of how I debug that. You'll see these little props in and out of Spookville devlogs. Uh, they will all be hidden in the final product. But I want to show you kind of my mindset of how I debug and troubleshoot new mechanics. So over here you'll see this giant cube and this cube has a collider attached to it and a script. The script has a method in it that actually generates the resources scattered across the world. And what I was doing is I was just using the on trigger event to fire off that method so that I can test how many resources actually get spawned and what their distribution across the world looks like. Looks like Teddy's having a good old time. So let me go and collide with the box and we'll see that list populate and then I'll go back to the editor and look at where they all spawn. Yep, there we go. So there was a little bit of a jitter. Uh, that's going to go away. I've got some debugging going on. Uh, but yeah, right now we can collect all of our resources that just got generated. And there were 404 resources that got instantiated and added to the spawned resources list. Uh, 
as you can see, they're, they're just spawned throughout the world randomly. So these systems are going to really amp up the gameplay time that the game has. You'll want to collect these resources to build up your defenses because when night falls and those evil spiders or, or werewolves come to attack, you're going to want all the help you can get. There's so much we can do with this system and I'm excited to keep going and sharing more with you, especially building up the defenses of the cabin. What I want this to do is to make this a game that you enjoy. I know Cohen enjoys recording his voice, his lines. There's been a couple of occasions where I've just handed him the controller and just let him play Spookville and it's so exciting to watch him just sit for an hour or two while he's playing the game that we're making together. So I feel like we found our niche, we found what we're good at, and now it's just putting it all together. We're no longer creating systems, but we're actually creating gameplay. And that's the most exciting thing is that we're on the right trend to completing the game that we started building last year. So with that, I'll leave you. Thank you for joining and I'll catch you in the next one.